Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope my family is doing well. Uh, my family being you guys. Yeah, you guys are the family, the, fam the familia. Even if you're having a rough day, trust me, I'm going to make it better right now. Because, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be entertained uh, on hashtag LNT with your favorite entertainer, Ahmed Ali. And welcome to episode 14. And tonight's episode is going to be wild. It's going to entertain everyone. And trust me when I say we're going to lit it up tonight. But before we do that, let's go and jump and see what's trending in the world today. Once again, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So tonight, uh, we are about to kick off today's episode with a couple of uh, what's trending today. Uh, and, you know, Kim, uh, Kim Kimmy, not that Kimmy. Not Kimmy Cash, but you know that Kimmy Jong Un, this Kimmy right there, the fat, the fat guy on the left. Uh, yeah, him. Now this guy, uh, you know, the leader of North Korea, for the first time since he took power in 2011, his he just finally got off his chair. We don't want to say got off his beep, no, but got off his chair, and uh, you know went to China uh, to discuss with the president of China, and you know try to solve all this uh, nuclear stuff uh, and you know he's saying that he's he, he's discussing to give up nuclear weapons uh, for North Korea now what else is trending you know a couple of episodes ago I think the episode before the episode before that Google Google and Orso, Orco they lost uh, a copyright claim or case uh, to Orco for over 1.8 billion dollars now, I don't know what's going on with these websites. We, we talked about Facebook losing over $80 million just last week, and now Google just lost $1.8 billion in a case. I mean, come on. Why, why do you have to use uh, the Java software to build your Android uh, software? Anyways, that's not important for tonight. What's important is moi is chilling in Karbala, and moi is about to present an episode. So why don't you guys tune in right after the short break. Now to all you watching, including myself, are the backbone of society. All the others, young and old, they depend on us, on our works, you know, sometimes everything. Uh, if not all, you know, and 90%, if not 99.99999% can relate to this. Why? Because we have parents at home who tell us to do the lawn, uh, you know, who tell us sometimes to do the dishes, some of them do. Alhamdulillah, I don't do dishes. Uh, do the laundry uh, and do other stuff at work or do stuff at home, you know, chores, if you will. Uh, so we're greatly dependent on, due to the high dependency on youth in society, we have an important role to play um, in the future of our families, in the future of our communities, and in the future of our countries. The youth have to renew and develop society from all aspects through leadership, innovation, and skills. We are the most capable age group that has potential, that has the potential to change the world. If we were to look at what youth are doing in the world today. We have a lot of examples coming up, but we youth are like the main characters in the movie. We're like the chocolate chip on cookies. Without chocolate chip, what are we gonna do? How good will cookies taste? I mean, you're just eating oatmeal cookies, which they taste disgusting. You know what I mean? You know, I'm craving some cookies right now. You know, I, I, I hope uh, the genie that uh, brought me the donuts a couple of episodes ago, I think it was episode five, uh, I just hope that genie repeats that and brings me some cookies uh, that can, you know, change my mood right now. Because honestly, when I ate those donuts uh, a couple of episodes ago, I was, you know, I, I thought, you know, they came from heaven. Because honestly, those, Allahu Akbar, the genie has come. Oh my God. 
Are those chocolate chip cookies? Subhanallah. Wow. That reminds me of episode five. That, wow. Wow. Wait, it's not coming to the... Oh, hold on. Are those donuts? Are those... Yeah, subhanallah. You know, when, when a believer prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, or has an intention uh, to pray to Allah, you know, of, uh, of donuts, you'll get them right away. These were delivered uh, especially to hashtag al uh, with the camera. But, mm. Mm. Oh, wow. That, that's actually good. Wow. D good memories. But subhanallah, you know, the genie comes again. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't call this genie. This guy is from heaven. Honestly, you know, if, uh, if God gives you something, you should always be grateful. God is the greatest. You know what I mean? But this cookie looks deadly. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, shouldn't this be, you know, uh, astaghfirullah. <laughs> Look at those chocolate chips. Imagine this cookie being without chocolate chips. See right there, see that chocolate chip right there? That's me, and, and that's me, and that's you. That's the youth, and this is the world, you know what I mean? We are these chips that are on the chocolate. But anyways, let me just enjoy this for a second. Mm. Anyways. Wow. Wow, I'm going to need some milk. I feel like, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm Santa Claus right now. I just need some milk. But we'll continue this right after the short break. Let's go. All right. So enough with eating cookies, but I'm going to finish these right after the show. You know, every, every break I get 10 seconds, I can probably eat one or two but no I'm kidding um, now we always have to think together we always have to work together we have to put together what our parents taught us what education taught us and the previous experiences uh, what they taught us as well youth are creating new trends and are making new trends to change the world to spread happiness in the world to raise awareness in the world if we were to take a few examples, I mean, look at vines. Vines were created by youth. You don't see an old person doing vines. They were created by, uh, you know, uh, youth to entertain the world. And what else do we have? I mean, you know, one, one of the groups, uh, who was Hussein? This was initiated by my good friend Muhammad Abbas in the UK. A doctor who felt like something needed to be changed in society, so he took it to his hands. And he created a group who was Hussein and it's, and basically, in, in every Western country and uh, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern countries uh, and Southeastern countries as well. Now, we ha we, all of us have this potential, but how much of it is actually being put to work? Are we utilizing the skills and abilities that we have to upgrade and enhance the society we live in? Do we have that? We go to training courses to become pioneers. We utilize our time and to be more efficient and productive. We follow the footsteps of our parents. Well, you know, at the same time, we don't have to fall into the same mistakes they did, you know, because doing that will just, you know. But anyways, what, what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I follow that motto. So that can also be taught. But we are strong, powerful, smart, and loyal. You know, you loyal, you smart, you powerful. You strong. So all of that put together, that makes us youth. That makes what the world flourishes right now and the flowers in the world today. Now this brings us to tonight's question. We want to pave the way for you guys, for the youth out there, to become pioneers, to become entrepreneurs, uh, to change this world, uh, and to become leaders is most importantly. Because uh, we do need leaders right now, like moi, you know, on hashtag LNT, the late night talk. Uh, you know, that sign right there brings happiness to my heart. 
you know, that sign right there, right there brings happiness to my heart, you know. And my name actually being on TV brings happiness to you guys. Of course, you know, we got to, you know, Abu Fadl's in the background is what brings happiness to the world. You know, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have any more. But anyways, yeah. But tonight's question is what? Tonight's question is what? Tonight's question, how do you activate youth potential? How easy is that? How do you activate youth potential? Beautiful. Thanks to the co-producer for putting that right on the dot. How do you activate youth potential? Pick up the phone right now. Right now, pick up the phone. Dial the number shown right there, plus 964-774-067-1836. Or you can also tune in to our Facebook page at hashtag LNT or at LNT.show or at Imam Hussein 3 tv to tune in and watch a live broadcast on Facebook. You can, you know, put the thumbs up. You can put the reactions. You know, the, the best reaction I have is the heart, you know, because, you know, we love that. But give a reaction, share, do whatever, all the good stuff. But we're going to go into a very short break, 10-second break. Let me finish my cookie, and we'll be back very shortly. Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope you, inshallah, hope you, inshallah, enjoyed that 10-second break. Because honestly, I did with the, you know, with the cookie. I felt like I was... You know, those youth on and those chocolate chips. I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, welcome back. Uh, we do remind the viewers uh, that the question is, how do you activate youth potential? The number is down below, plus 964-774-067-1836. So, back to tonight's question. How do you activate youth potential? Earlier I mentioned that we the youth are treasures. According to a study made in 2000 and something uh, <laughs> on unfpa.org, 25% of the global population are used between the ages of 15 and 24. So do you know how much that calculates up to? That's 1.8 billion youth. 1.8 billion treasures, shall I say. 1.8 billion just look at that although that's you know that diagram but if you guys look like that that that's sick but you guys don't um you know imagine what would happen if we were to bring or all the youth worked hand in hand and brought all their heads together you know as the saying goes two heads are better than one but imagine 1.8 heads 1.8 billion heads that's a lot of heads that's a lot of heads. <laughs> you know, let's let's do, let's let's take a look at a few uh, teenagers, a few examples of teenagers who actually made history and changed the world. Now, Lewis Braille, yes, Braille. Does that make does that sound familiar? Lewis Braille is the inventor and the creator of the Braille language for the blind in 1824. He was just 15 years old and he was blind himself. You know, he, he was inspired and determined at a young age to create a language so he can write and read. You know, for, for, for a blind person, you can barely uh, do a lot of stuff. But this person inspired himself, you know, because you can't be inspired by another blind person. You have to inspire yourself. And this guy was so determined and and courageous enough, honestly, uh, that he uh, that he was uh, determined as a young boy, 15 years old, created a language that would benefit us in 2018. That's an achievement. We also have the famous Pakistani activist Malala Yousafzai, who in 2014 became the youngest recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. She was famous for speaking against the Taliban uh, and encouraging young girls to pursue uh, a career in education. And honestly, this person is, is, is an, an inspiration herself uh, because we do need people like her in, in the world. But we do have a call uh, from Hussein from Iraq. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Hashtag Galanti. 
And tonight's question, how do you activate youth potential? Uh, well, thank you so much for having me in your program. My name is Hussein Allah. Okay. Rashid, I'm from, I'm from uh, Najaf. And um, like, uh, I, I would like to say that um, they grow up in society. Mm -hmm. And Iraq's communities face many challenges from both external and internal factors. Okay. As, as, as part of my society and as part of my homeland, there were many factors, okay. many influences trying to upside down to decimate us. I, 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 like, I, I have found that we are turning a blind eye toward these factors and toward these influences. Sorry, can you mention some of so, these factors? Um, um, uh, the problem is we need to raise uh, the awareness of our people, of our own people. Okay. Of peace to all people from all over the world. Okay. And um, I think that is the way to activate uh, our youth potential by using social media, mm -hmm. by using its budget. Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Brother Hussein uh, from Iraq, who joined us tonight uh, and for letting us know what you think. And uh, that's one of the, the ways that you can activate uh, youth potential. So, social media uh, is key for him. And uh, if it works for you, that's beautiful. But I need to take a short break and eat another cookie. You know what I mean? I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get fat tonight, you know? But we'll take a short break and we'll be back very short. Do stay tuned. Ya Allah, water. Ya Allah. <laughs> ya Allah, water. Subhanallah. Come, come closer. You got all this way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, right on my phone. Thank you. Allah. No. Oh, Khuda, we thank you. Khuda means Allah. Uh, but, yeah, back to the topic. We do remind the viewers that we are live from the Holy City and Karbala and with your favorite man, Ahmed Ali. Um, and tonight's question, how do you activate youth potential? The number you can call is plus 964-774-067-1836. Now, before the break, we got a, a phone call uh, from a brother who said that social media is key to activate youth potential. Uh, and honestly, that's one of the one one of the good ways to activate youth potential, to encourage others, uh, to uh, to activate other youth, or you can activate yourself. Uh, you know, just pressing the activation key. I uh, know I'm kidding. Uh, you know, uh, but this person before the break, we're talking about Lewis Braille. Age of 15, he was able to 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 create a whole language uh, for an entire nation, if you will, uh, the blind nation. You know, uh, but. For society uh, and the future to thrive and prosper, uh, all of this needs to happen. We need to keep a few key points in our mind, a few key, major key uh, in our mind. Uh, now, the first key is education. Education is, is critical. The knowledge of young people that the, people, the, the young people acquire from school is actually beneficial. <laughs> You know, a few a few episodes ago, you're wondering is college education worth it? And honestly, it's safe to say it kind of is. You know, you're spending a lot of money, but it kind of is. Uh, but we just have received a message before we continue with major keys. But Ali from Norway, what does Ali say? He says youth around the world should initiate movements for di for different causes to help society. Yes, thank you very much, Ali from Norway, uh, for joining us tonight. Yes. Uh, and uh, honestly, uh, and, and I do re-mention again, uh, the, the team of Who is Hussein are doing a great job in the UK, in India, in Canada, and in the States, and other uh, countries as well. Uh, and uh, they are doing amazing um, in their work. They are changing a lot of people's lives. Uh, they, hand, they hand out uh, soup in soup kitchens. They, they, they have soup kitchens. They have blood drives. Uh, they have other... Uh, things as well that they offer uh, for dental services, uh, you know, uh, doctor services uh, for uh, the, the poor and the homeless. 
so that's actually beautiful to see that uh, people are thinking uh, of each other, not just selfish, not just being selfish. But we were talking about some of the keys we need to keep in mind. Now, one of the key was education and the knowledge that we get from school. Next is creativity. Adding your own flavoring to everything you do. You know, if, if you get to meet an artist, uh, honestly, one of the great things that he's going to talk about is putting his own creativity in it. And sometimes you don't even get the picture. Yeah, and one time I was walking in a museum, in, in an arts museum, and I'm not even kidding. One of the uh, pictures that was hung up, uh, the paints, the paintings, it was over $500,000. And it was a couple of scribbles. What, what's in that? <laughs> You know what I mean? Why is that so expensive? Oh, it's, it's, it's the creativity of, uh, of the people. You know what I mean? So uh, that adding that flavoring is beautiful. OK? Now, the next is involvement. Do we do have a call? Yes, Mom? Say uh, Muhammad al-Musawi from the USA. Salamu alaikum. Welcome, welcome to hashtag LNT and tonight's question, how do you activate youth potential? Uh, well, the subject regarding youth potential is super vital in today's society yes. because if anyone has potential, it's the youth. Mm -hmm. um, you could think the older generations have, you know, tired and withered out by now, but inshallah that's not the case. However, our hopes and our aims and our aspirations are toward the youth. Mm -hmm. But the issue is how do you activate that potential within? And there's an old saying that goes, you can't force a horse to drink water if it's not thirsty. So one way to activate and get the youth involved and their potential unleashed, I believe, is marketing. If you want to bring them towards uh, Islam actively, you have to market Islam in a way where the youth are very exposed to it and they like it and they enjoy it. Sometimes we take the old and traditional classical methods in advertising Islam, such as you might have, let's say, a respected elder um, discussing subjects pertaining to salah, ibadah, and psalm, yeah. however, the youth don't gravitate toward these sort of concepts or in this exact manner. Perhaps if they see other youth um, involved in expressing, speaking, they'll find this resonating with themselves. You know, someone out there is trying to bring me towards faith, but this person isn't someone far away from me. They're another shabab, yes. they're another person. Or you could hold the community gatherings, uh, masajid, and uh, at the, on, along the side, let's say you have a soccer match following the program. This will definitely gravitate the youth and ultimately unleash their potential, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Muhammad uh, Musawi from uh, the USA for joining us tonight. Uh, and honestly, uh, beautifully said. And, and uh, you know, uh, why don't we switch places now? I'm kidding. Uh, you know, one, one, one. Uh, actually, let let this camera stay there. One of the points that Muhammad Musa, uh, Hussein Musawi, or Muhammad Musawi, uh, from the USA, he mentioned marketing, and he said we need to market to the youth. And this logo right here, this logo right here, the hashtag LNT is the best market for you guys. The best market. No need to spend anything. You know what I mean? Free of charge at home. You just chill, tune on to hashtag GLNT at IHTV3. And let's come back here. And all you got to do is pick up the phone, dial the number, plus 964-774-067-1836. And answer the question and give us your opinion on the question for tonight. Let's pop that out. How do you activate youth potential? How do you activate youth potential? Dial the number free tall. Dial the number toll free at plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. Thank you very much. But going <laughs> going back to uh, yeah go, go, going back to our discussion uh, and you know me the all knowledgeable Ahmed Ali. Uh, but uh, we were mentioning a few key points. Uh, we talked about education. We talked about creativity. And now on our list. Third place is involvement, and this is key. This is huge, uh, because honestly, with involvement, you can create a lot. As I mentioned earlier, if we brought 1.8 billion heads together uh, and tried to work together, we can create a lot. We can create a lot. Um, so, uh, w involvement is one of the ways. How do you involve? How do you get involved? 
Muhammad Musawi uh, mentioned it to us. Uh, you know, when, when there's a, a, an activity in your community, do get involved. Don't just sit there. You know, a lot of people, uh, I, I've seen this, and it's unfortunate. A lot of people, when a certain activity is going on, they're, they're not willing to participate in it. Um, so, you know, get off and, you know, uh, go and, and help others out, uh, you know. You, uh, and even sometimes, if, if there is a group, and, you know, uh, a big shout-out to, to, to the members of, of MACE, McMaster Ahl Bayt Islamic Society at McMaster University, uh, it, was, it was an honor uh, to work with you guys a few years ago and honestly they're doing a great job as well uh, where you know uh, and it's it's nice to see groups like that in universities initiate groups like that in, in universities because we actually need them uh, and uh, one of the points that you can mention e when, when, what it's nice about that group is you say something uh, about uh, uh, the, the, the university you know the, you want to create uh, uh, an initiative up in the university all you got to do is go through them and then uh, they go through the MSU and then everything gets sorted Alhamdulillah that we have uh, groups like that uh, but we do have an audio message from from Sheikh Mateen from the USA my dear friend and brother uh, Sheikh Mateen wa 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 the question about how to activate youth potential can be answered um, by doing the following, everyone mm. has some sort of skill set or some sort of talent, something that they're good at. They have to take a look and analyze their self, analyze their potential, what they're good at, and learn how to um, get their skills to, the, to a good level. That way they can use these skills and these things they're good at to serve Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam. Because we shouldn't waste our potential. We have to use this potential that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us and use it for the betterment of mankind and use it to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we should look around and see what things are needed in the community, um, what people need, how can we help, what are we lacking in, that way we can try to step up and fill these um, positions that need to be filled. But we have to work on ourselves and seek knowledge and learn how to get our skills to be able to fill these positions. Because if you try to fill these positions and try to help without knowledge, you can cause more harm than help. So you have to have the knowledge and seek knowledge in order to be able to help other people. And we should never waste our time. We always have to make the most of our time. No matter where we are, most of us sit idly or play on our phones or um, we're occupied watching TV or playing video games or whatever else people things people do but we have to use the most of our time when we're commuting to school or mm -hmm. work try to listen to some lecture uh, when we have free time try to read or even when we have some free moments try to use them reflecting on what we can do or how we can help or well, try to plan and strategize so we have to make the most of our time and use the skills that we have to be able to help uh, other people. And this is how we can use our potential to the fullest. We have to have an action plan and work on these things and have some clear set goals and start trying to work towards those goals and achieve those things. Sadaqallah al azim Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that. That was that. that th those were uh, beautiful words that you mentioned, uh, my my, my uh, dear brother and uh, good friend, uh, uh, Sheikh Mateen, uh, from the USA. Uh, a couple of points, you know, uh, and just to add a, a point to what you said, a lot of people do uh, have uh, the potential in them, but they don't know that they have skills that they haven't. Uh, you know, people need to go. Uh, deep in themselves and uh, you know explore uh, their inner self that way they can find uh, you know meditate aka prayer uh, and 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 try to find uh, their selves from within uh, to change the world uh, to the better inshallah because honestly uh, change be begins with me and then I can change you uh, so you know hashtag guarantee changes the world but tonight Tonight, tonight, tonight is a very, very, very happy occasion. 
and that's why I'm happy and excited and super hyped. Um, I'm super hyped in all, in all episodes. But, and I wish you guys a very, very uh, happy and joyous evening, day, night, morning, dawn, whatever. Uh, I, just have, I, I just wish you guys a, a happy day on this very auspicious and blessed occasion. It marks the birth of the ninth infallible 11th Imam, Imam Al-Jawad, Muhammad Al-Jawad, peace and blessings be upon him uh, who occupied the highest position. Look at these two domes, Imam Al-Jawad Al -Jawad and Imam Al-Kazim, peace and blessings be upon them both. But he, uh, he possessed the highest position in, in, uh, in terms of human virtue uh, and uh, moral attainments, uh, if you will. Uh, and, you know, and, and these uh, characteristics are possessed by all the Imams of Al-Bayt, uh, Now, it was customary you know, for the Imam um, to meet everyone humbly, uh, to help the poor secretly and um, uh, publicly, to even treat the foes uh, with fairness and equality to everyone uh, and honestly there's something unique about this Imam uh, that really connects us to him is the fact that this individual this great personality lived for only 25 years right now I'm about to turn 26 inshallah so the Imam lived as many years of eyes uh, uh, as, as much as I lived and I don't know how much I can give in terms. I'm yeah. I'm not wearing my rings today. Uh, you know, I don't know where they went, but you know, we'll try to find them somewhere. But Imam Al Jawad, peace and blessings be upon him. He lived up to the age of 25, and he, you know, gave so much to his community. I remember a simple story before we conclude for tonight. I think we have uh, a minute left. Um, a, a simple story. Imam Al Jawad, alayhi salam, when he was playing. Uh, in in, uh, in Baghdad, Al Ma'mun Al Abbasi, the person who killed his father, Ramadullah, was walking or was on his horse with his men, and he saw Imam Al Jawad and he stopped because whenever Al Ma'mun and his troops walked into the streets, everyone just ran away, including the, the children. Imam Al Jawad was only around, as uh, uh, history tells us, around 8 to 11 years old, um, around that age. Um, so when Ma'mun came, Ma'mun Jawad just stood there, so confident. Ma'mun said, why didn't you run away like the other kids? He, Ma'mun Jawad alayhi salam, he says, why would I run? I haven't done anything wrong. Ma'mun was shocked. He's like, is this an eight-year-old or is this a, 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 like a knowledgeable person? He says, why don't you go play with the other kids? He says, we were not created to play. Let's comprehend that. He's like, we were not created to play, and I love playing, you know. So that, 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 that's a message to me first. You know, I always play on my phone. I play Candy Crush and all that good games, uh, you know. But at the age from 8 to 11, he was able to say that. He says, what's your name? He says, I am Muhammad ibn Ali. He says, son of who? He says, son of Musa. And then it goes back all the way to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he knew he who. who who he was talking to. Right away, he said to the Imam, come with me. Uh, and, you know, the famous story goes on. You can probably uh, check the lectures with Ahmad Naqshwani or other uh, individuals uh, that talk about this. But tonight, we should take only one message, is to activate the youth potential. Hopefully, hashtag Galanti and the crew of hashtag Galanti were able to ignite uh, the, to, to, to ignite that potential within you uh, and you know to pave uh, the way and go help society <clears throat> uh, to reach its best thank you very much for joining us tonight deuces thank you very much take it easy.